I'm Sharan. Uh, this is team number eight. This is Harun. Uh, we are representing the automator mesh solver. Next slide, please. Uh, well, the project objective uh, for our project was to develop, design, and build an automated robot uh, which could scan the complicated maze area where no human person can go easily. And it should be able to record the feeds. And at the same time, without getting stuck at the area, the robot should come out of the maze itself. So, uh, the principle uh, of the robot, what we build, uh, it's called depth first search. Uh, what it does is uh, it starts from the point A. Uh, if, it, if it finds the straight way, it should try and go to the straight way. If it's a dead end, it's going to move 180 degree and, and it's going to go back. If it finds a right turn, it's going to go right. If it finds a dead end again, it's going to go rotate 180 degree and at, at the same, con I mean, logic like that, it's going to move and can cover the whole loop out here. Uh, the extra logic what we incorporated to this logic uh, was for the looping. So uh, if your ro robot uh, recognizes that, that it is following the same path more than five times, it, what it does is it tries to bifurcate this path. So if anything happens and if it gets stuck to some place where it's just looping in the same path, what it does is try to find another path to break that loop and it come out of it. Next slide. Um, this is the basic flowchart. It shows that how the robot is going to work. Uh, we have a line sensors mounted um, at the starting. So what it's going to do is we have five line sensors. So once you start the robot, if the line sensor in the middle, IR sensor in the middle, if it detects uh, the line, it's going to go straight forward. But if the right hand side of the sensors, if it detects the line is going to go turn right. At the same time, for the left side, uh, for the yeah, for the left side, if it detects something, it's going to go turn left. But what happens if it comes at the intersection where he can go maybe to right or wrong? I mean left or maybe straight. Uh, what he's going to do is going to follow the right hand side wall strategy. So if it goes at the intersection, it goes right hand side, and it's going to explore that loop. Once the loop has been explored, it's going to turn back and it's going to come at the same intersection and it's going to take again right. This, I mean, taking this concept, it's going to follow all the intersections and it's going to cover all the loop ahead of the intersection. So at the same time, it won't miss any of the loop and it records at each part of it. Well, this was the initial design. What we took, uh, the basic idea was for the bobot. Uh, it's kind of small, uh, not even not much, uh, you can look at over here, I mean, uh, you can easily put in a, some small face and you can use it. Um, uh, we mounted a board, uh, which is 80 mega 8 board. Um, this is, a, I mean, the, for us, uh, you can say the price was a factor again. So, uh, we use 80 mega 8 instead of 80 mega 16 or 80 mega 32 as, as they use for the robot, uh, humanoid robot. Um, next slide, please. Well, as far as the timeline is concerned, uh, we, we met our timeline. We started our work uh, around a month back, and today we are here. We are, we are ready with the presentation, and uh, we already did the, our part. Uh, the components, uh, if you look at the components, uh, we have a light sensor, five IR sensors. We have a microcontroller board, which is mounted on the top, which is 80 mega 8 microcontroller. We have a chassis, uh, which was incorporated uh, uh, with the um, motors and the IR sensors. Uh, we have servo motors. Uh, we used uh, actually uh, servo motors from a car, so uh, we had to solder it and we had to fix it on the stages. Um, as far as the program is, programming is concerned, we used AVI Studio 4 to program for the board. Uh, we even mounted a wireless camera so that whenever the uh, robot goes to the uh, actual performing action, you can take the live feed of that and you can record it. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a picture of the 80 mega 8 microcontroller. Uh, this shows that the, how we actually uh, made this robot to work. Uh, what we did is we have a small display over here, which actually shows you if whenever robot is moving straight forward, if it takes a right turn, it indicates R over here. 
So at the end, wherever robot is going and it's coming back, you could actually take out the results from the display and you can look wherever it moved right or left and you can easily note that. Um, um, uh, the other things uh, on the board uh, was pretty simple. Uh, we have a memory control unit. Uh, plus, we have uh, two options for the battery, so we could easily plug in the battery source or maybe with the DC jack, you can just plug in the power supply and then you can do the same thing. Okay, the futures of the um, mini board which has the microcontroller are the, uh, like first, it's we, we can program in two ways. We can up, uh, like uh, upload the program using USB or using 6-pin ISP. In this case, we have used the USB uh, USB uh, like a cable, and like there are two supply inputs, one through battery and second one through uh, adapter. But like we have used battery so that it will allow to run freely inside the maze. So that's uh, battery. We have used the battery for that, and we have 16 into 2 LCD interfacing port, which is. This one, uh, as like Saran said, it will like whenever it detects a black ship, uh, like uh, you can see the uh, output in this LCD. Okay, IR sensors. Our uh, we have used five infrared sensors, which one, which you can see here. This five infrared sensor, and this is the basic uh, like uh, working circuit of the IR sensor. So first, it will emit a light. 200 ohms resistor is used to emit the light infrared and the infrared light. Then, like this 13 ohms is used to receive the light, and like uh, the received light is converted into voltage, so that like uh, it, it can uh, it will convert it into our voltage in the output, and like uh, it also depends on the like the. Receiver, the light receiver is also the de depends on the distance between the infrared sensor and the black ship. So you can see here, like there is a uh, the, the LED light. So the distance between the LED lights and the black ship is just uh, half an inch, which is perfectly right. If we use more than half inch, uh, there there will be a problem in directing. So we, that was one of the concerns of our uh, program. So uh, again, like uh, we have used, uh, we have assembled the interfacing LCD to mini board, and it's easy. We have some it's 16 pin LCD, so like we can uh, check uh, the output of uh, from the infrared sensor using this LCD. And these are the pictures of our robot assembly when we are progress. Like we are connecting the servers to it, and we are connecting the uh, infrared infrared sensors to the. Um, uh, microcontroller unit and we are connecting the batteries. And this is our final robot assembly. Uh, this is camera, this, uh, like, uh, these are infrared sensors. And the batteries, which we have, we have used two batteries, 9 volt batteries, one for the camera and one for the robot. Like uh, the, both, the camera, uh, both the batteries are uh, kept, uh, like, uh, kept inside the, this robot so that it will Occupy the uh, all the space it can. Like it will, uh, it's kept inside. Like so that it, we don't need to need an extra space. Like so that it will accumulate uh, both the batteries inside. Like testing myself, the testing was done. Uh, like uh, the uh, the infrared sensor detected properly uh, the light black strip, and like uh, it scanned the entire mesh and it, uh, the fields also taken using the TV and this and this radio receiver and like uh, once it reached the destination as we expected like it, uh, it came back and it found the minimum sharp distance uh, and it came back to the original position but the only problem we had is the, the thickness of the black, uh, black strip you can see here we have used five infrared sensors uh, but the thing is like they are very close so if the black strip is uh, the black strip should be in such a width so that the just only uh, uh, one sensor should detect it. If the if more than one sensor detects, then uh, the robot will start like turning right or left. Uh, we have programmed in such a way that like it will go forward when it when the IR number three detects the black strip. So if it is little bit wide, so if the, both the if, uh, IR IR sensor number three and four detects the part, 
so automatically it will it will thinks there is a path thing right so it will turn right so that that was also one of our concern the thickness of the width of the path so future improvements we have used ad mega ad controller so it, it uh, this basically it only accepts uh, like a small uh, kind of sensor like e, uh, infrared sensor so if you want to use ultrasonic ultrasonic sensor you should go for ad 16 or ad 32 kind of uh, microcontrollers uh, which is very advanced and they will allow us to use the robot in situation like earthquake cave exploring and combat situation so we can also use better servos to get better speed and uh, it will so if you are using a compact situation it will easily find the path and it will come back very fast and we can also use gps navigation system which can be implemented so that we can find the like the we can trace the robot so this is our demonstration of our mesa robot As you can see here, over here it comes to the intersection, so it's always try to go on the right hand side. Once it's reached at the end, it's gonna go turn backwards and it's gonna move straight forward. Again, it reached at the end and it's gonna go backwards at the 180 degree and it's gonna go turn left. And you can also see that like uh, when it, whenever it detects a black light, the LED is blinking on and off. Like, but the other LEDs are like on, but the IR number three is off because it detects the black light. So it's going to keep going uh, till the end um, and once it's reached at the end it's going to try and come back to the initial position without getting stuck uh, to any other path. You can see the, um, the screen over here, it actually records uh, wherever it takes turns, if it turns left or if it turns right, uh, the indication of R or L is going to be there on the LED. So this is the end question, so it will uh, try to find the minimum distance and it will come to the original question. So instead of following this longer path, it's going to go to the shorter path and it's going to go to the end. So it's going to go to the initial position again. Uh, at the same time, uh, when we were recording this, we, ha we had a wireless camera on it. So you could easily see that we had a platform over here which is running right now. And the wireless camera is mounted on it and we had a TV over here somewhere else. If you put uh, robot over here and you want to watch everything outside from outside so you can easily watch see we took a uh, red color and blue color so you, you can easily notice the contrast when it's what is there exactly in front of it so the robot moves there and you can easily watch it on the TV by the video camera on it for the future improvements we can say is uh, see this kind of a robot it's called a micro mouse robot so the controller that it use it's a pretty 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 what you say advanced level controllers which can easily calculate the spaces around it and it could solve a maze in 10 or 15 seconds. And rather than that, it could even come back out of a maze just till the end. And within a minute, uh, you would be able to get the everything what is there inside with the video capture on it. So, this is, that's it.